morning, everyone. It's lovely to see you. As it's been the practice in the last few weeks that we've had our outdoor car park services, I'd like to do a quick sound check. So, as usual, if you can hear, give a cheer. Great stuff. It's good to see you. It's great to see you here this morning. For most of you, this has been uh, a time that we've been able to worship outdoors. And uh, for many of you, it's not your first time at an outdoor car park service, but there are one or two here this morning that it is their first time. So we do welcome you, even though it's the last of our summer uh, planned outdoor car park services. And it's great and I'm delighted to be able to welcome you. This is the last Sunday in August, and as I say, the last of our outdoor services. I hope you have enjoyed them and uh, enjoyed being to, together outside. And uh, this uh, week we're having a selection of, of hymns that have been selected that we've had at our previous car park services. Uh, hymns that up until now, some of them we've not been able to sing because of the ban on singing. But now that we can sing, you will be able to sing them along uh, as we, we join together. And you'll find the, the words printed on the, the little uh, hymn sheet there. I really do hope that this is a time of rich blessing for us all. We've certainly been very blessed with good weather throughout all of our car park services. And today it's nice and warm and it's lovely to be able to, to see you and to be able to share in this time of worship. And it makes us appreciate just what a beautiful countryside that we, we live in. And we're going to commence our worship this morning by singing the first hymn on the hymn sheet, which is All Things Bright and Beautiful. We'll remain seated as we sing All Things Bright and Beautiful.
let's come before God in prayer. Let's take a few moments to be still, to allow all the distractions that clutter our lives to fade from our thoughts, to take a few moments to forget about the dishes that have been left undone or our to-do list, to put our worries and concerns on hold as we take time to be still in the presence of our Lord. Loving Heavenly Father, we gather today out in the open and we give thanks for all that we hear, see and feel. The sounds of birds singing or the hum of insects as they fly amongst the hedgerows. The beautiful countryside around us and for the warmth of the sun and the fellowship of friends. Each new day we see your hand at work the sunrise and the sunset, bringing with it new opportunities and challenges, but also the assurance that you journey with us. We give thanks for the food on our tables and the clean water which quenches our thirst and waters our land. Heavenly Father, we have so much to be grateful for, but we confess that so often we forget or neglect to say thank you and we take what we have for granted. We get so caught up in things that we fail to see the natural beauty around us. We get so engrossed in technology that we can miss the wonder of a simple smile or fail to see the look of hurt or distress in others' eyes. We can be so preoccupied with our own concerns or goals that we don't think or see how our actions or reactions will affect others. Loving God, forgive us for our lack of thinking or compassion, for our self-centeredness, our failure to be the people that you have called us to be. Help us to follow in Jesus' command, to love our neighbour. Help us at the start of this week to refocus our minds and our hearts and to see your goodness in others and see the world that you have created in all its beauty and wonder. And as we slowly engage with others and move forward within our community, may we as Christians shine your light for all to see and to make this world a better, brighter and safer place for all. Hear this, our prayer, which we make through Jesus' name who taught his first followers to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Since our last car park service, the schools have returned and many of our children have gone back to school. And for many people in Scotland, the summer holidays are nearly over. And yet, we've had some lovely sunny weather. But it's starting to feel very autumny, isn't it? Especially in the mornings or in the evenings. Julie and I travelled up to Aberdeenshire last week and it was lovely to see the, the lovely changing countryside. But some of the trees were starting to get that golden autumn colour. And it's just lovely to see and to see the beauty of the, the landscape. It's starting to see the, the berries. I think you can maybe see some of them in the, the hedgerow here. It's certainly starting to feel autumny, as I say. And today heralds for us a change because this is the last of our car park services. You may recall we started them back in, in June. And at that service, I brought along a little dancing flower. I think it's still here. There we go. Don't know if you remember this wee dancing flower that when the sunlight shines on it, it makes it dance. Works with the, the solar power. And we concentrated and thought about God's provision and providing for us all that we need. At that service, I read to you the passage of scripture from Mark Chapter 4, verse 26 to 29. And I'd like to read it again. 
It's a parable of the growing seed. Jesus went on to say, The kingdom of God is like this. A man scatters seed in his field. He sleeps at night and is up and about during the day. And all the while the seeds are sprouting and growing. Yet he does not know how it happens. The soil itself makes the plants grow and bear fruit. First, the tender stalk appears, then the head, and finally the head full of grain. When the grain is ripe, the man starts cutting it with his sickle, because harvest time has come. Amen, and may God bless to us this reading from his word. We are approaching harvest time, and all around us we can see farmers working in the fields, gathering in the harvest of the crops and the vegetables. Many of you, I'm sure, have also been working over the summer in your gardens because we've really enjoyed a lovely summer spell of good weather. And some of you may well have been harvesting some of your own homegrown fruits or vegetables. I've brought along a few this morning. I've had a wee go at growing things. Um, here we go, my gorget. That's, that's, that's the biggest one that we've, we've had so far. My tomatoes, I'm afraid, oops, not quite as big. There we are. They're wee, wee tomatoes. They're, but, they're, they're, but they're delicious. At the service in June, I also gave out little sunflower seeds, you may recall. And little pots, like this one here, tiny little seeds. Now, I had a vision at that time that maybe we'd be able to grow them all around Bishopton. And the idea was that maybe we could then bring them and put them outside the church, and it would be lovely to see all these sunflowers. But I didn't account for the restrictions. Now, you might be thinking, what restrictions are there on plants? I'm talking about height restrictions not government restrictions, and I couldn't fit some of the sunflowers that have grown into the car. I brought along some of the smaller ones, but uh, some of the ones that we've got are, 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 are as moms describes them as like Jack and the Beanstalks, are, they're, they're huge. So if you do want to see a couple of big uh, sunflowers, walk past the manse and we'll hopefully have them at the, the front garden. But I don't know if you noticed, if as we came along to church this morning, there's a, a garden with a beautiful sunflowers. There's also sunflowers as you come into Bishopton in one of the, the, the boxes there that says welcome to Bishopton. So the sunflowers have taken off in, in Bishopton and I hope that all on your gardens because I know that there's some are growing in Erskine, some are growing in Bishopton, some are growing down south and I know that there are uh, sunflowers all over that started off here in the car park. I must admit I really did enjoy growing my sunflowers and I was determined that at least one of them would be about so that I could show it to you, that I'd been able to take care of it. Initially, when I planted them, I put some of them up in the, the window ledge in the kitchen. Others I put outside in a little plastic greenhouse that I'd bought to make sure that they were well protected from the wind and the cold. And for nearly two weeks, I watched but nothing happened. And then all of a sudden, the soil seemed to be disturbed. And then a little green shoot would appear in one of the little pots. And then over the next few days, the other pots all started showing little green shoots. And then over the weeks, as I carefully looked after them and made sure that I moved them about into the sunshine and given them water and bringing them in and out of the greenhouse each day and feeding them with plant food, they got taller and taller. And some of them started to grow a little crooked. Don't know if any of you had that same situation. So I ended up having to put little canes in to make sure, or little uh, butterflies, just to make sure that they grew nice and straight and received a little bit of extra support. Now, during the summer, we've had some very warm weather. And it's very important to keep the young plants well watered, as I found out to my cost that some of them started to, to wither. But we also had some very heavy rainfall. 
And I know that some of the, the plants, some of you lost your plants due to the extremes of weather. My sunflowers, however, continued to grow. And even when I went away for a few days in July, I arranged to take some of these sunflowers over to my parents' home in Paisley so that my dad could look after them. And he'd done such a good job that I decided to leave six of them with him because by that time they'd grown too big to come back in the car. The stalks kept getting thicker. And then over the last few weeks, we've ended up with some little flowers. They're not quite there yet, but they are starting to, to show there. And it's just wonderful to, to see them. But it's just like the passage of scripture that we heard and, uh, earlier on about how at first nothing seemed to be happening. And then all of a sudden, the little green shoot, and then the stalk, and then the flower. And it's been a little bit like this with our car park service. Initially, it started off small, but over the, the weeks, it's been growing. Initially, we weren't allowed to sing, and now we're able to sing and be able to share fellowship and have tea and coffee together. And we've been really blessed with the weather, and it's been great to be able to do this. Just the same with our church. Although for many months, our church services were not be able to held in the church, we've been able to have these services streamed online. And it's wonderful to think that people, not just in our own community and village, are watching these services, but we are worshiping with others out with our village. And that's wonderful, just like the little sunflower seed. It's growing and growing. Over the summer, we've also been looking at the Old Testament book of the Psalms, which are poetry and hymns that were used by the Jewish community to, as they worshipped God. And today, as we finish our outdoor services, I'd like us to conclude our reflections on the psalm with Psalm 150, which I'm going to read for you now. Praise the Lord. Praise God in his temple. Praise his strength in heaven. Praise him for the mighty things that he has done. Praise his supreme greatness. Praise him with trumpets. Praise him with harps and lyres. Praise him with drums and dancing. Praise him with harps and flutes. Praise him with cymbals. Praise him with loud cymbals. Praise the Lord, all living creatures. Amen. This psalm tells us that we are to praise and worship God. And how we're to do it? We're to do it with our voices or with instruments, with dancing. In other words, we are to be joyful and happy when we worship God. We're going to sing again the second hymn in your song sheet, which is to a very joyful tune. It's uh, to Ode to Joy by Beethoven. And the words are also joyful about praising God. And we'll sing this song. Sing to God new songs of worship. All his deeds are marvellous.
over the summer months in our car park services, we've had some good fun and fellowship. You may recall the giant football and the inflatable goals that were used to mark the Euros which took place in July. But more importantly, it was to express the message of us keeping our eyes fixed on the goal. And the goal being our commitment to following Jesus. With the lockdown and over the last 18 months, restrictions on in-person gatherings, our Sunday school and youth organisations have no longer been able to meet up. And much of the girls' brigade and boys' brigade and Sunday school activities has been done via Zoom. This has meant that much of the presentation of badges and awards, which would usually have been done at the annual display in the Cornerstone, and uh, what should have taken place last year and again this year, has not taken place. But this has not stopped our young people from continuing to work towards their badges or awards. And one such individual is Emma Brown, who's attained her Brigaders brooch, which is one of the highest awards that can be achieved in the Girls' Brigade. Emma, can I ask you to come forward? And also, can I invite Captain Jill Morrison to join us here at the front. Thank you, Emma. That's great. Emma, this award has been given to you in recognition of all the hard work that you've done. And it's not just been over one year, has it? No, is, is it five years in total for the brigade for the, the brigaders brooch? Yeah, five for it, in total twelve. Twelve, because you started off in primary one when you were five years of age, and you've worked your way up through all the sections, and now you're in the, the brigaders, and you've the last five years you've been working towards this badge for the, the which is the, the second highest award that can be given. Is that right? Quite an achievement, isn't it? Quite an achievement. And this has involved programme badge work and physical, spiritual, education and service. And each year you've gained a, another badge, is that right? You've got all your triangles there. That arm must be really heavy. <laughs> but it really is a wonderful honour uh, for an achievement for you to get this. And it's wonderful that we're able to do this today. And I'm going to ask Captain Jill Morrison to give you your award and your badge. There we go, well done. And Emma, I have for you a Bible here, which is presented to you on behalf of the, the congregation of Bishopton, the church. And uh, it's just a great example of a young person coming through, imagine 12 years in the girls' brigade. That's quite an achievement, isn't it? And we hope that you'll be richly blessed in your, your future. You've certainly got a very good, strong foundation with what you've learned, the skills that you've learned at the Girls' Brigade, and hopefully these will help you in your life and your future. And we're really, really delighted. I have a, now uh, some, a wee bouquet of flowers. Now, during the Olympic Games, you may have noticed that when the medalists came forward for their, their awards, they were given a wee bouquet with sunflowers on it. So I thought it would be quite appropriate uh, to, to give you these sunflowers for you to enjoy. Okay? Thanks. Well done, Emma. Well done. Yeah, thank you very much. What a great example Emma is to us. All those years of dedication and commitment to the Girls' Brigade and to helping others. Another great example of how our young people can grow and develop through the church and through our youth organisations. As a congregation, we're currently looking at ways in which we can support our Girls' Brigade, Boys' Brigade and Rainbows as they recommence in the autumn. One of the areas we do have of concern is the need for more leaders. So if there's anyone that feels that they would be able to, to help in any way at all, please do contact uh, Jill Morrison or speak to Douglas Hope or speak to myself. As I say, we're looking for 
individuals that would be able to, to help us out with our youth organisations. Later this afternoon, a number of the children from the Sunday School will be heading off to Finlayston Country Park for an activities afternoon. Again, we hope that this will be the start of getting the Sunday School back together. And we hope to be able to recommence this in the cornerstone as we go into the autumn. The next few weeks, as we go into this autumn season, I'm sure it's going to bring with it many challenges as we try to navigate our way to reopening our buildings to the various activities and events while keeping to the government guidelines and monitoring the local and national COVID infection rates, which may, as, winter, as we go head towards winter, bring further restrictions. I mentioned the sunflower bouquets that were given out with the medals at the Olympics this year. And the reasons that the sunflowers were chosen is that they're growing in Miyagi, one of the regions that was affected by a great earthquake and subsequent tsunami in 2011. An earthquake and tsunami which killed thousands of people. And each year, the parents of children who died in this disaster plant sunflower seeds in memory of their children. And each year, thousands of sunflowers bloom in this region of Miyagi. And this was why the sunflower was chosen, as it seemed a very poignant way for Japan and the world to remember this loss of life, but also to show that communities can be rebuilt and life does go on. Like the little sunflower seeds that we planted in June, they're growing all over gardens in Bishopton, Erskine, Paisley, even down south. And it's just as I say, our church services are growing and also our online services. Going back to Psalm 150, we are to praise God at all times, in all circumstances, not just in a church building, but in a car park, in our homes, in our workplace. And when we praise God and worship God, we are shining his light. Just like wearing a high-vis jacket or shining a torch in a dark place, we are seen by others. But more importantly, they see Jesus in us as we share and spread his good news message. Amen. And may God bless to us this short meditation on his word. We're going to sing again, and it's the third hymn in our sheet. Lord, the light of your love is shining.
I'm sure you're all feeling quite parched after all that singing. It's hard work, isn't it? All these months of not being able to sing. But there is the opportunity to enjoy a cup of tea or coffee and there are two tables set up, one for tea and one for coffee. All you need to do is go to the appropriate table and collect uh, your beverage of choice. I'd like to take this opportunity to thank all the volunteers who have served the tea and coffee both at our outside services and also in the extension hall after the church services uh, in, in a Sunday morning. This is very much part of our fellowship and it's great to have it back. So as I say, please do stay and enjoy a cup of tea or coffee. As I mentioned earlier, after our service with Sunday school, children are going to be meeting up at Finlaston, we plan to meet at the Old Laundry at one o'clock. And uh, if anyone hasn't indicated that they're coming along or if they know of a young uh, family of the, uh, that would like to come along, please do speak to me at the, the end of the service. There is still plenty of, of room. Uh, those that do attend need to bring their own picnic. And as I say, we're really hoping that this will be the start of our Sunday school getting back together. Next, Saturday, the 4th of September is Renfrewshire Open Doors Day and part of this initiative the church will be open between 10am and 4pm and we hope that we'll be able to attract visitors from our local community and beyond. Our church was built in 1815 and was designed by David Hamilton who was one of Scotland's most famous architects and even those who are regular attenders may find some new and interesting information. So you're encouraged to, to come along between uh, 10 and 4 next Saturday. Next Sunday, at the, the 5th of September, we have an all-age service in the church at 11. And I very much look forward to welcoming the family and friends of Elner and Kevin as they present their son Callum for baptism. This service will be live streamed live stream so that members uh, of our community that are worshipping from home can join with us as we welcome Ca Callum into the church family. Current regulations stipulate that we still have to wear face coverings uh, in church uh, and we are still encouraging social distancing whenever possible and request that those who attend continue to provide uh, contact details. And the easiest way of doing this uh, to avoid congestion at the door is by registering uh, online and it's quite easy to do so. For those that would prefer to speak to Ruby you can call her on a Thursday morning and Ruby will register you. But as I say details can be given on a Sunday morning at the door. What we hope is that those who attend feel safe, comfortable and most importantly welcomed. Although today is our last of our summer car park services or scheduled summer car park services next Sunday afternoon at 3pm we're hosting a joint service with the congregation of Our Lady of Lourdes. This will be the first opportunity for the two congregations to enjoy worship and fellowship in nearly two years. We normally would have shared in Holy Week services and Advent services but due to the Covid restrictions on gatherings this was stopped last year and we very much look forward to having this short service of reflection and thanksgiving as both congregation seeks, seek God's blessing on the forthcoming autumn season in our churches and community. On Tuesday the 7th of September we have a, a Zoom Kirk session meeting and I plan to send out invitation to elders uh, next week. And my final little intimation is that we have not just a presentation this, this morning uh, to, to Emma, but we also have a, a couple that have celebrated a very special anniversary. And I believe that Mr. and Mrs. Redpath have celebrated, is it 60 years of marriage? 60 years, well done. <laughs> and Mr. and Mrs. Redpath have been up all of our car park services, is that right? We should give you a, except for one, we should give you a perfect attendance badge. <laughs> well done, it's lovely. And we wish you many, many more happy years of, of love and fellowship together. Let's come to our prayers 
for others. At this moment, our world seems a very hostile and dark place, and there is much to concern us. For millions of people worldwide, they are suffering from the COVID virus. There are civil wars, religious persecution, and the aftermath of floods, fires, and earthquakes. Let's come before God as we pray for our world. Loving Heavenly Father, today we pray for the many countries that are struggling with this pandemic and don't have the resources to cope with the sick and the dying. They don't have the vaccine to provide the immunity for those most at risk. Many nations that are overwhelmed by the scale of this virus and the devastation it brings to families and communities. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer as we bring to you this global pandemic and the chaos and destruction that it has brought and continues to bring. We ask that our politicians and world leaders will work together to ensure that many of the poorer countries and those in need receive the vital medical supplies that they need and that vaccines can be made freely available to them. Loving God, today in our prayers for others, we pray for the growing tension in Afghanistan and the ensuing humanitarian crisis which has developed. The millions of women and girls living in fear of the Taliban. Many forced to leave their homes and trying to find a safe haven in other lands. We see images of men, women and children desperate for food or medicine. As food is in scarce supply, wages have been stopped, hospitals closed or no longer able to care for the sick. The threat of violence and acts of brutality on those who do not comply and death to those who oppose the regime. Compassionate Lord, we pray that the aid that has been earmarked for this country reaches the hungry and the sick, and again that our world leaders and politicians can work with the new government to avoid further suffering and brutality. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for the thousands of people who have lost their homes or loved ones in the wildfires that have so recently swept through Greece, or the floods a few weeks ago in Germany and Belgium, or the recent earthquake in Haiti. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. In our own community and circle of friends, we pray for all who have been recently bereaved and all who grieve at this time. Comfort them, Lord, and give them strength in their time of loss. We remember those who are in hospital or sick at home, those waiting on surgery or treatment at this time, when hospital appointments can be haphazard or delayed. We give thanks for the millions of NHS staff who do their best to provide a good service, despite the restrictions and ongoing pressures that they are experiencing. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Loving God, we pray for our church as we work towards the autumn season and reopening the cornerstone and re-engaging with church and community activities. Our thoughts and prayers turn to their leaders of our organisations and our groups as they work through the risk assessments and regulations needed to reopen. We remember all the volunteers in the various groups some who are still not sure about face-to-face -face contact in enclosed spaces, many weighing up the risks to themselves or family through more contact with others. Lord, in your mercy, give our leaders and volunteers wisdom and strength to do what they can to provide a safe place for our organisations and other activities. May we never feel 
overwhelmed by what's going on in our world. As we live our lives in the knowledge that Jesus is the light of the world and this, that the darkness has never put this light out. We remember that like the sunflowers, we flourish and grow in the sun, Jesus, our risen Lord and Saviour. Lord, in your mercy, hear these our prayers. In Jesus' name, Amen. This, as I said, is our last car park service and I do hope that you've enjoyed it and you will join us for a cup of tea or coffee. I'd like to thank Daniel and Ian for all the technical stuff and getting our services online. But I'd also like to give a big thank you to, to Julie for all her hard work. Behind the scenes, blowing up inflatable goals or giant footballs, as well as working the sound system in challenging times. But I'd also like to thank each and every one of you for coming along and making these services so enjoyable. The goal that I set out was to make sure that we could grow in faith and fellowship through fun. And I think we've achieved this. And I hope that you have felt safe as you've joined back in this time of worship. And you will continue to watch online or come along and join with us in the church. We conclude our service by singing one of our favourites, it's last, it's a hymn in the uh, song sheet, You shall go out with joy and be led forth in peace. Let's stand if you're able as we sing. the light of the glorious gospel of Christ shine in our hearts, transform lives and brighten the world and the blessing of God Almighty, Father, Son and Holy Spirit be with each one of you this day and evermore. Amen. Stay well and stay safe and enjoy your tea or coffee. God bless.